My guest is Dr. Tom Kelso. Uh, Dr. Kelso is also a writer, and we've asked him to be here today to talk about his uh, relatively new career in writing. Uh, welcome to our show, Tom. Thank you, Dan. It's nice to be here today. Uh, well, first, let's let our audience know that you're, a, you're an orthopedic physician. Yes. Am I right? Correct. And that's your full-time job. That's my full-time job. I do it every day of the week, almost. Right. But you've taken up writing sometime in recent years. How recently? About three and a half years ago is when I started. All right. I have a lot of questions for you. Let's assume I'm an aspiring writer, but haven't gotten to your point yet, so, so I have a lot to learn. Um, when did you get the idea that you were either a good writer or writing was interesting to you? Well, I think that dates back to my childhood. You know, I've always enjoyed writing. I've always had sort of a literary uh, bent to my, my interests and sure. my desires. Sure. I was, born in a family of voracious readers, I, I can tell you I never, I can't remember a time when my mother didn't have a book that she was reading, and that sort of kind of rubbed off on, on me and my, my brother and sisters. So we were always reading. Uh, I enjoyed writing. I knew I was a, a decent writer early on, and I minored in English in college and thought well, about... that's very relevant, isn't it? it I actually yeah. at times thought about doing graduate work in, in English, but ended up going into science and going to medical school eventually. All so. right. We want to talk about your, is this your first book? First book, yes. All right. But, but let's go back a little before that. Um, did you write short stories? Did you, have you had an idea about this book for years? Uh, tell us how all this came about. Well, I really had, you know, my life has sort of been focused on medicine for the last sure. three, three decades. Sure. And prior to that, I was, uh, uh, I thought I was going to be a college professor, and I got a PhD in physiology before I went to medical school, and that was done out, out in, at Washington State University, and I did a lot of technical writing. I would publish research papers okay. and, and academic book chapters and, and things of that nature, but writing fiction was really something I never thought about, and I never wrote short stories or poems or anything like that. But it's something I've always wanted to do. I said, I, I, I want to write a novel. I wanted to do that when I was young. I yeah. just never got around to well, that. Well, I, I admire that. I, I've always felt that I have a book in me, yes. but it hasn't come out yet, and, and I'm glad that yours has. Well, I did. I, wrote, I sort of felt that way, and I wrote, a, I wrote a master's thesis and a PhD dissertation. I said, well, I've checked the box. You know, I've written a book, right. but yeah. you know, it really it's not the same thing. You know, you know, technical writing is completely different, sure totally is. worlds of difference than writing fiction. All right. When did you get the germ of the book? Uh, uh, we can see here that the name of the book is Fractured. We know that now. It's a very good visual. But when did the idea begin? So about four years ago, one of my college roommates, a guy named John Highbush, uh, sent me a rough draft of a manuscript that he had written. Okay. And... Um, he went and, and I read it and I critiqued it for him and he and I were very close during college and we went to a lot of classes together and I said you know if John can do this I can do it and then I started trying to figure out a story that would you know basically be something that I, I would be that would sort of play to my strengths in terms of medical uh, technology because I've always liked Michael Crichton he's sort of my sure my uh, hero, if I have a Passed writer away here. a few years ago. Yep, he did. Yeah. S uh, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. At, a, at a young age. Yeah, but, right. So uh, about three and a half years ago, I just sat down and started writing the story out. All right, you've given our readers a clue already, and that is that your, your book relates to your knowledge of the, of the medical profession. Am I right? Correct. All right. And, and the advice for aspiring writers is to write about what you know. That, 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 that advice dates, I don't know how many years back, but, but I think it's true. I, I think do too. Some yeah. people will tell you, uh, you know, write what you don't know because it makes you learn something and do research. But I think you know you really can't write with true authenticity unless you have some strong background on what you're trying to yeah. write about. Give our viewers a nutshell summary of of, of the uh, plot. So the plot, the the hero of the book is an uh, orthopedic surgeon named Mark Thurman. And Mark is a trauma surgeon at a level one trauma center, in, in a fictional one, but it's in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. And he has, prior to taking this job, he was in the military, 
and he was medically discharged from the, from the military, and so he started a civilian career. While he was in the military, though, he worked with the Navy SEALs and Special Forces. And one day he's in Raleigh and gets called, or early one morning he gets called to the emergency room for a trauma alert. He works for the orthopedic trauma service there. And he goes in and he sees this guy who's been shot. But he thinks he recognizes him and it turns out he was one of the guys, one of the SEALs that he took care of when he was in the Navy. I see. Now Mark's not a SEAL, but he was assigned to taking care of uh, the Naval Special Warfare Development Group, which is the elite SEALs in, in the Navy. And so there's a mystery about how this guy ends up getting shot. And then, you know, he gets, Mark gets pulled into it, saving him using some uh, interesting medical, you know, cutting edge medicine that he is an expert in. But also the bad guys start coming back. And, and that's where the conflict kicked. Sam, because I'm, I'm told every great book has to, every great novel has to have a, a lot of give and take conflict. Yeah, so the, the bad guys who did the shooting of his friend are coming back and Mark and his research partner are trying to save him and they get pulled into being involved in trying to save his life yeah. and theirs ultimately. Yeah, great. I, I won't ask you about the ending. I don't want to give it, uh, I don't want to give it spoiler alerts. Right, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> How did you write? Did you write a few pages a day? Do you write in spurts? Are you a prolific writer and then take some time off? How does it work for now, you? For me, it's something, it's a discipline. You have to really do it every day. And I just made it a personal goal. I'm, I'm going to write something every day. My wife, is, my wife and I have been married almost 40 years now. So she puts up with me, puts up with me, <laughs> and she lets me after dinner. You know, I'll go up and sit at my desk and write for an hour or two, and then I do big chunks of writing on the weekends. So I'll get up early on Saturday morning, Sunday before going to church. I'll get up early and write, and that's where you know I'll go from seven o'clock Saturday morning to two o'clock in the afternoon, and and really get a lot of work done in those day, in those days. But otherwise, during the week, I'm I'm writing. A couple of hours each night. Yeah, and then you know, there's a, there's the process. You got to get a you got to get a rough draft down mm -hmm. first. Right. And so, it took me probably six or eight months to write the rough draft, and it was a much longer draft than what it is now, because you end up writing a, a lot of stuff that you end up cutting later. But uh, and that's that's really the toughest part because once you get that rough draft down, then you go back and you st right. I start. You know, right. editing and going through it and tightening up the story and figuring out what need, what scenes are needed and what scenes need to be cut, and then you have to get good helpers. I mean, you've got to have. Uh, I'm, sure. I'm a member of a writers group in the St. James area. Uh, I hired some professional editors to help me write it, and then later on, once it was selected by Amazon, their editorial staff went through it again. So it's. A lot now, of that. I don't want to go to the ending, but I want to ask this question. Did you write with the ending in mind, or did the ending evolve? No, the ending, you, I knew the ending before I got to the ending. All right, all right. I mean, it was, I wrote the ending scenes, and then much of the middle part had to be rewritten at various sure. times. But the opening hook, the, the inciting event, you know, the, the opening hook and the climax were known. Yeah. long in advance. And the plot is obviously a key part of, of your book, but let's talk about character development. Okay. I mean, how, how do you get depth in character development? How do you create that? Well, the, 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 the hero, Mark Thurman, is, you know, sort of the guy that I wished I could have been. <laughs> And we'll, of course, never come close Let's to it. Let's tell our viewers also, also that you were in the Navy, which is uh, very much inconsistent well, with your book. That gives me a little bit to draw from. I sure. was in the Navy for nine years, and for the last two years, I was uh, orthopedic surgeon assigned to SEAL Team 6 of okay. the Naval Special Warfare Development Group. So I was familiar with these people. I knew their routine and the kind of things that were going on in well, their did, lives. Did some of these characters remind you of people that you know? Some of them are, and some of them are purely fictional. Sure. But some of them are based on friends and acquaintances. They will may or may not recognize themselves, but anyway, it's, it was fun doing that. Claire, the heroine of the of the book, is uh, 
you know, sort of uh, uh, a character that, I, you know, I greatly admire. I've, sure. I mean, this is a, yeah. a woman who is intelligent and strong and, you know, very, uh, what I would consider very admirable, you know, woman that I would love to be able to meet and, you know, roughly based on people close to me in my life. You right. Know? Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay. We are ATMC TV Channel 3 and HD Channel 910, your community channel. At ATMC, we know that fast, reliable internet is essential to connecting our local community to a better future. That's why we're investing millions to bring faster internet to members living in Brunswick County's most rural areas. We call this Project 2019 because in the next 24 months, over 4,000 of our members will have access to internet speeds up to 50 times faster than today. Because when it comes to doing right by our members, it's all about you. Uh, we're back with Dr. Tom Kelso. Uh, Tom, we, we spoke a little bit about um, how one becomes a writer and their different styles, and you have mentioned to me that there are plotters and there are pantsers. <laughs> give, <laughs> give us that distinction. So uh, that's, that's very accurate, and there are really two schools of how you go about developing a story. Sure. And a lot of writers, and there's, well actually there's a hybrid as well, but there's two basic schools. People that like to write detailed outlines, and they'll spend a lot of time, months and months in, in preparatory phase of writing, and well, they will go through and create a detailed outline of each chapter, each scene of each chapter, so and then ultimately they'll fill in the it, blanks. It almost writes itself and then they just go back and fill in the dialogue. Right. And then the other school on the opposite end of the spectrum are the people that just organically let the story grow. And Stephen King is a classic example of but that. So our viewers, viewers will know that's the seat of the pants. Seat of the pants. We Philosophy. call those pantsers. You're writing by the seat of your pants. Um, Lee Childs and Stephen King are the two most well-known uh, writers that write like that. And people like Ken Follett are detailed outliner, and John Grisham yeah. is a detailed outliner. So uh, You've been a little bit of both, right? Uh, I started out as a pantser because I had no idea what I was doing. And I quickly realized that you will be much more efficient with your writing time if you uh, become an outliner and, or a yeah. plotter, and that's, that's kind of what I am now. I like, I, on the se the, my second novel, I wrote a detailed outline, and it was written and much faster. But for a, a debut writer, you've had a lot of success. You're, you're published, you're, you're on Amazon, you're hoping to have a lot of success with this book. Tell us how you get from the beginning to the end very quickly. There's a process. <laughs> well, you're, you're gracious in saying I'm successful. I'm not, I have not yet become successful, but I'm, I'm, I've gotten some lucky breaks. Uh, I found out, I was a little naive when I approached the, the whole subject. I thought that if you wrote a good book, that you know you could send it off and an editor or an agent would pick you up and you find your way to being published. But the sheer numbers of, of aspiring writers prevent that from occurring in an automatic way, right? It's, it's, it's like trying to become a, a rock star or a movie star. Right. It's, the numbers are daunting and if you stop and think about it, you know, you'll probably won't start. Right, right. So I did, I, I did. I wrote query letters to about 75 agents. I went to writers conferences and you know, just fa wasn't having any luck. Mostly because of my inexperience, they don't want to take a risk on a, on a debut writer. They don't have the time or the resources to worry about that anymore. Two quick questions. Uh, you have another book that you're working on, yes. am I right? Yes, the sequel to this book. All right, give us just a taste of that. So it's called, uh, the working title is Hyperion's Fracture, and it involves uh, pharmaceutical, corporate espionage, uh, the opioid crisis and the contender for the Kentucky Derby. Fantastic. Okay, final question, how to purchase. So uh, Fractured should be available on Amazon within the month. Amazon has the final uh, manuscript right now and they're making a page where you can pre-order it and it should launch, I hope, sometime in March or April. Tom Kelso, thank you so much and our viewers, uh, I'm sure, will Jim, thank you purpose. very much. I appreciate yes, it. Sir.